viewers. Um, after 21 years of governance, um, I think there's a lot to offer, but in our case, um, our narrative was different. But Mr. Charles is going to give us a preview of what is happening. Um, can we continue from where we left off? Thank you, Eric. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, as I was saying, uh, when it came to, uh, say, 1990, uh, when it came to 2000, mm -hmm. when the then um, NDC government under Chairman Rollins had to hand over, the purse was empty. It doesn't matter what you think, the purse was empty. So you take power, you have a manifesto, you have an agenda, but when you take the power, you don't have any money to do it. So you're going to have to look for ways. And it is traditional that whenever we have problems in Ghana, we always come to the World Bank and IMF to seek help. It, so obviously, Kufo had to take Ghana to Hippic to say, we don't have anything. Please cancel some of our debts. You know, help us you know, to, to, to do something domestically. And Kufo was, I think he was highly favored in a way that he got lots of funding, uh, a lot of foreign investors saw Ghana because Kofo is a very matured, I mean, he's a very matured politician. And, and I, I believe I know for a fact that um, he did law and politics. <laughs> So correct, correct. And, and I think he was in the government. Of and, course, even Kofor, so he's got more experience. Of course, even Kofo in terms said, of politics, he served and, under the no. PNDC government as well. He oh, really? as a local as uh, well. local government head of local government. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so uh, there was yeah, some kind of experience. a relationship also, even with Chairman Rollins. Kofo had worked with him before, so you couldn't say that they were totally like at odds with each other. And so it was a good time. And when he done the re-denomination, or if you want to call it re-evaluation or re-denomination de denomination of the currency, taking off the four zeros, what it meant was that now every Ghana city... Uh, can, you, can you really... It's a technical term. I want my viewers to understand okay. exactly what is that about. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so yeah, obviously, your, your economy, you're, you're looking at your economy against other economies. Okay. And is it a comparison? Uh, yeah. of, of in, in a way, it's like... And I'll obviously bring it down to a very basic way so that we all understand it. Mm -hmm. So, for example, depending on your development uh -huh. and your domestic productivity in mm -hmm. your currency, right? If you say, well, if I have one pound, which I used to buy something for a pound, and you've got, say, 10 cities, mm -hmm. and you come to me and say, oh, can I exchange my 10 CD with your one pound? Mm -hmm. I am going to look at your value domestically what your value is and i'm going to say to you sorry i i don't want your 10 cities i want 20 cities instead of 10. Mm -hmm. so i'm trying to say i'm i'm more valuable than you so is it the is this the exchange rate yes the exchange which is a very powerful we see people and especially ec economies or you know in these developing economies they downplay what the exchange rate can do to you the exchange rate holds your value. You see, your domestic productivity, what you are producing domestically, as a you know, in, as a nation, and your with all your arguments mm -hmm. creates your value. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And so, so how do you get the city to be powerful against the dollar and against the pound and against the yen and against the you know the runs and all that how, 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 how do you how do you, value how do you put value on your money uh -huh. how do you put value creating on, jobs or what I'm how do you put that. value to your money so this becomes that domestic productivity against that money right so it's all about money supply right so anytime you is it about exports or imports or i just want to know it, it's, 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 your, it's your productivity so okay. when you're Say, let's say we in Ghana, we've advanced ourselves so much that we're producing tablets mm -hmm. and the whole world wants this the special tablets. things that we produce mm -hmm. that brings value to us. Okay. Let's say our cocoa. Mm -hmm. We were always uh, cocoa people today. I saw a video, they were complaining about back in the day how they used to produce cocoa and the British will buy it for cheap. The British set the price. But if you were converting your cocoa, 
into chocolates, into uh, what we call it, consumable you know, goods. Consumable goods. Mm -hmm. If you're converting your bauxite to proper shaped aluminium uh, unit to use to build a plane, you are shaping it. You are bringing components. Yeah. Components. You are bringing more value mm -hmm. into your country, okay. and therefore it will. It strengthens your currency, your pound, your dollar, your okay, currency, your currency yeah. right? So people desire the things that you have, and therefore they will be willing. Say when you give them your money, they say, "Oh, we are very happy to have this CD mm -hmm. because when we get it, we can even come to Ghana and buy this uh, uh, aluminium component to use to build a plane." Oh, but if we go and we just extract the bauxite, I'm now getting it. We just extract. Hey, was, are you getting the, the explanation? <laughs> I think it's good. Yeah, we it's just get the bauxite. Uh, the bauxite. What is the bauxite? It's just uh, in the ground. What is it? But if you convert it into something that is usable, that is productive, mm -hmm. it's your productivity and your money supply. It has to match. Mm -hmm. So, once again, interesting the state that we're in. Mm -hmm. We Ghanaians needs to take full control of our money supply. Mm -hmm. The currency that we print, ideally, shouldn't be printed by an external, so say, Bank of England is printing the city for Ghana. Mm -hmm. Then what is the independence of Ghana? If some other country is going to print our currency, do you think that... And why is that? Please. Why do we, is, it, Please. is it because we don't have the mint, the machine, or the machinery, the equipment to do that? Well, then you've got to go and get your own. Because... I mean, do you think that uh, England we is... We don't even have a plane. Do you think uh, England is going to be printing money for China? No. You we don't even have a plane. What's going Thank on? you for watching this series. Watch out for the next one. Please don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Thank you for watching. Welcome back, viewers. Um, we will continue where we left off. Um, Mr. Charles Bedukusi was explaining to... Mm -hmm us how productivity and the value um, of our city um, works and he was discussing about uh, in country production in terms of industrial level so um, he's going to continue from where he left off and then we will much understand where he's coming from okay thank you eric so as we were discussing earlier about the productivity as in the, and obviously the exchange rate is what led to this productivity issue because your exchange rate really affects your country if you don't do the necessary things to hold the value of your currency you continue to go down that slippery slope to decline and then you just decline over the years and then you find yourself that you did something to revamp your economy and then you know 10 15 years down the line you're back at the same place again mm -hmm. because you've not really done anything constructive or anything productive for your nation so when we were talking about the value it was boiling down to productivity so this is where for example in our education system it's not really giving us what we need because the people that we are producing we're producing uh, in the past it was right for that we produce administrators lawyers uh, doctors we always need them <laughs> because they save lives I, I heard that Singapore was doing some kind of an exchange um, program that they will maybe send about 100 students to maybe Cambridge University or you know students abroad yes. to go and learn you know to go and learn up this technical vocational skills yes. something that when they come home they can produce or manufacture or something yeah expand the so why can Ghana do the same you know exchange programs or even allowing people to go in and out to educate ourselves or our, our generation next generation or even the current generation mm -hmm. of how to do um, or manufacture certain things or yes. produce certain things it, it, it is interesting you see um, it's very interesting and it's very easy to carry on with the status quo mm -hmm. so for example uh, before independence or even after independence you know the British were always happy to keep us as uh, the producers of raw materials Right, and then not just Ghana, but all the African countries. They saw Africa as a whole as the um, 
That's like when you want the raw materials, just go to Africa and get it. Set up your own prices because you know they can manipulate the situation. And then we can get into the mindset because the education system, everything that they left behind, is there to perpetuate or to help their systems. Nobody is going to give you education if I'm not. You know, if I want to exploit you and I give you my education, mm -hmm. are you with me? Mm -hmm. I want to give you an education that is going to help me to grow. Mm -hmm. Not an education to help you to grow. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. Sense, yeah. When I give it, so mm -hmm. when we have free education, free this, and a system, you know, of education that sort of help the colonial Master. systems. Mm -hmm. So when you become independent, you have to review that you have to ask yourself i think recently one of the deputy education minister or one of the junior education ministers uh, is a good friend of mine went to school with him at jachi pram so he he had been to the one of the eastern countries to check what they had done better than ghana and he i remember in the video he did mention that we need to change it we need to produce people that can produce stuff in the, in the education process, mm -hmm. we need to come up with carpenters, we need to come up with builders. We're not going to learn history and all that. No, that no, no, wouldn't no, no, help. No, that's not going to help you to develop because you see, look at Britain. Many years ago, everybody wanted to be a civil servant or some lawyer or something. Today, in Britain, Britain is rich. Another set of, I mean, when you come to London, you see so many skyscrapers and so many things going, so many develop, so much development yeah. going, because there, there is a reward mm -hmm. to builders. Yeah. The builders are making money. When you put the incentives there, the people are going to take it. So, get that, change that educational mindset. Reward handsome people, reward people that are doing something that people are laying railway we could cover all the 10 regions with railway travel. We don't have to wait for China to come and do this for us. So our productivity, which is sort of linked. So we have to link, a generation linked, of experts. Uh -huh, linked, technical, mm. vocational. We need to expand our technical and vocational education. Mm. And you will, that, is the, that is what is going to create the, the development. That is what is going to create the skillful people mm -hmm. to build stuff. So we don't and have technology. To, uh -huh, we're not going to go to somebody to say, do it for us. We've got whiz kids that can also create, you know, and our education should be pioneered towards creativity anyway. Creativity. Mm -hmm. Because if you can create and you don't have to go and depend on somebody, on somebody. then you can. Because be, over the years, I think it. we've been very dependent on yes. all this. Um, and this is why, obviously, China is the next, obviously, next. How uh, are we going <laughs> to develop? Uh, my question is, how do you have any sort of um, great ideas in terms of our development processes? How are we going to do it? It's, it's uh, as I said, this, the, this government, they've got Apart the... Apart from the exchange rate that holds our money value. To hold the value. No? Yeah. Yes. Um, as I was saying, this government they've got the uh, they've got the vision because that education junior education minister or deputy education minister did mention it. They've seen it, so they, surely they have to put that into practice. So, for example, where you have a lot of GSS systems going on, you now have to bring in the actual equipment for them to physically practice. You got to you know, bringing those things inside the schools. To say, when we were in school, you go to the lab and have some experiment. Yeah. So you need, you need that. But I'm Once, asking, that all that experiment, mm -hmm. did we have any sort of um, benefit from that experiment, apart from those that went on to do pharmacology and those that went to do um, biochemistry, those that went on to do um, this dispensing technicians and all that. And, you know, apart from that, what benefit did we sort of um, embrace? Uh, I mean, in those times, as, mm -hmm. as, as I said, our main focus was on obviously having doctors. Yeah, doctors and pharmacists, we can never have enough of them. But then obviously there because was, it's like our focus is on that area 
and we are not concentrating on building the nation in terms of correct vocational and technology and technical know-how about how to build and you know correct infrastructure you need to be able to build your own office blocks office apartments we've got people that are into engineering and 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 quantity surveying and so many mm -hmm. different skills you need to put together you need to reward people that are willing to physically get out there get themselves involved in these projects to build you've got to build your nation you've got to build bridges you these are the things that the chinese are building for ghana Civil and that is why they are coming to take our five percent five percent of our bauxite for why do we have to go and borrow somebody from somebody when we have the resources. So what are our civil engineers doing in Ghana? Well, are they helping to build the nation or we are still soliciting for outside support and, and mm -hmm. contracts? What, what is interesting that you are finding yourself that your people are going somewhere, you know, Ghanaians are producing people who are probably all working in uh, foreign countries and working for some company, big company. It is never us doing it for ourselves. So we need to draw like for example what the government is also doing in terms of encouraging people who have uh, lived abroad to to come back in the this this, well, this goes back to, to, to come the nepotism isn't it because people should be you know enticed to come in and support Co calling their people back to build yes, their of course, because if somebody is there are something. so many experts out there but they are seven other countries there are seven other countries uh, so you need to have that uh, facility to bring them in and as I said, you need to control, be in control of your money supply. You need to make sure that if you are to create credit or if you are to print money, it has to go towards a development project or an investment project that is going to generate further income, uh, obviously, to help you know, develop the nation. Mm -hmm. So it's very key. So that your interest rates, you, are, you must always fight to defend your currency. The reason why I say this, is that when Kofu came, went to the Hithic, they dropped those four zeros. So now the Ghana CD was like, I think it was about 275 pounds to a CD at that point. Mm -hmm. And Ghana was almost one dollar, almost one dollar, one CD. Okay. Right? Yeah. But in reality, in reality, thank you for watching this series. Watch out for the next one. Please don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Thank you for watching.